Well, hey there, friends, and welcome to the Raising Amazing Tween Girls show. I am so glad that you joined me today, and I'm ready for a good chat. How about you? Whether you are multitasking like a boss right now or taking some well-deserved downtime, I am proud of you for tuning in and keeping your tweens, girls, health and well-being top of mind. I'm Lisa Tony with Girl Tribe Nation, and I am passionate about supporting tween girls and the moms who are raising them. If you have a daughter between the ages of 8 and 12, then you are in those tween years. As tweens, they aren't teenagers yet, but they are definitely starting to transition out of the little kid stage. Those tween years are when the puberty train starts to roll into the station and everything starts to change. Their bodies start to change. Their emotions start to change. The way they want to spend their time, who they want to talk to, and what is important. It is a natural life stage, but it can be a pretty big pivot in parenting when we have been used to that younger kid mode. Those tween years enter us into older kid mode as they go through puberty and start to head towards becoming a teenager. Now transitions can be rocky, but they don't have to be. My mom just sent me some pictures of the little lake that they live by in Northern Michigan. And the ice has started its annual ritual of starting to break up and melt to get ready for spring. Now I live in California now, so I don't get to see this every year, but I sure remember how loud it was. That ice transitioning was not quiet. There would be creaks and cracks and echoes and groaning. Every year the ice would go through this process and it keeps right up, shifting and moving. And this ice continues to shrink and the lake continues to grow until one day it's completely gone and the lake has made its transformation back into the beautiful blue water with no ice. And that's exactly when I like to go and visit, in July when it's nice and warm. Well, tween puberty can sometimes feel like that spring transition. There are creaks and groans and it isn't quiet. Tween emotions can definitely be heard and seen in a whole new way when their body starts to go through puberty. Now I call it the puberty train because it often feels like puberty is this big old locomotive that's coming at you that just can't stop. And we have to get ready for the puberty train. Well, as moms of tween daughters, we know that her body is getting ready for her to start her period at some point. And we likely expect the emotions that we have experienced maybe during PMS ourselves. But sometimes it catches us off guard that the puberty process can also bring up a whole host of emotions. I know, it sounds like a four year cycle of PMS, yikes. Well, it won't be that bad, but it will definitely be different. As the hormones start to activate their body and tell it to start to grow and change, it can set off a whole surge of emotions. Now, so for some of our girls, it will just be minor, but for others, well, that surge can feel a bit like an emotional tsunami. It can be very frustrating as a parent. But we have to remember, it is not their fault. They are experiencing more change than they have ever known. Their bodies that they once knew are starting to do weird things, grow hair and start bleeding. It can be very overwhelming. Now, yes, they are experiencing some increased emotions, but that just means that we need to be extra patient and intentional about teaching them what to do with those emotions. We need to teach them some healthy outlets because if we don't teach them, guide them, talk with them intentionally, then they will find an outlet. And sometimes those outlets aren't healthy. So we want to be there for them and give them a safe place to process. Our job as parents is to prepare them to become great adults. We love them, we protect them, but we also have to be very intentional about talking with them and training them up to understand what it means to be a young woman. We have the privilege of helping them learn what it means to become a woman. We can make it something to be honored and celebrated, or we can make it something that is frustrating, hard, and annoying. I mean, she is watching you. The things that you do and say will be her clues to help her develop her own sense of identity and self-worth. So let's get our game face on and bring our A game. You can do that. I'm here to help you every step of the way. In fact, in just a couple of weeks, I'm opening the cart to my new course, Growing Up Girl, that will help you walk your girl through all those beginning body changes she will start to experience in puberty. Growing Up Girl can and should be celebrated. Being female is a good thing. Getting to live life as a woman is fun and rewarding. 
Now we are living in a time where there are a whole lot of people out there that want to give our tweens a lot of options about choosing their gender. It honestly gets kind of confusing to me to look at the list of options that you can choose these days. It's way too complicated for me. Sometimes I wonder if it's too complicated for them too. I happen to think that it's an intentional and wonderful gift that you have been given if you are born a girl. So as moms, we can choose to celebrate that and nurture that in our daughters. Someday, they too will get the opportunity to grow up and be wives and mothers. And then we'll all be a bunch of grandmas. Won't that be fun? We'll be the coolest group of nanas around. I fully plan to rock that someday. But until that day comes, we've got work to do. I do want to invite you to an extra special free webinar that I've put together just for all the mamas in the house. It is a webinar where I'm going to go live with you and talk about the three secrets that every mom needs to know to help her daughter thrive in puberty. And I would love to save you a seat, but you do need to register. So head on over to girltribenation.com slash webinar and pick a time slot. I'm going to do the class in a couple of weeks and it's going to be on two different days, a Thursday and a Sunday. So you can pick which day and time will work best for you. I would surely love to have you join me for a one hour chat. It's going to be super fun and super helpful. Well, in the meantime, let's keep chatting today about puberty and emotions. What are some of the things that you can expect when your girl hits puberty? Well, she is going to be sensitive. She might get frustrated or irritated more easily. She might lose her temper or even feel depressed some days. That is why it's so important to keep those mama-daughter dates on your schedule, to give her some space to talk things out. Now we have some amazing free mother-daughter great dates on our website at girltribenation.com dates. One of the dominant emotions that a lot of our girls feel is uncertainty. As their bodies are changing, they aren't sure who they are or who they're going to be when all these body changes finally stop. Now, friends are going through puberty at different rates than they are. And it's such a weird time because girls the exact same age can look very different. Some may have not started growing breasts yet and still look very much like young girls and others who have started to develop look more like young women. Some of them have started their periods and others have not. I mean, girls start to think, more and more about their futures at this age too. They're starting to think about their career and college and maybe even having a family someday. They also start to look at boys differently and wonder about having a relationship with one. Some may even start relationships with boys. So as our girls transition to becoming young women, they are naturally going to start wanting to become more independent and they're going to start pulling away from family members a bit and lean more into their friends. So this is natural because their friends feel more relatable because they're going through all these changes. They're feeling that uncertainty as our girls are. But this can also start to raise some uncertainty where they encounter different opinions and different worldviews on things that their friends have. That's why peer pressure can really start to feel a lot stronger and have a stronger impact on them based on what they see in popular media and in culture. Now, their friends may have a strong influence on how they want to dress and their language and their behavior. And when that happens, this can create some stress that plays out in lots of emotions that are exasperated by body changes. I mean, this can really wreak havoc on emotions as our girls still want to have the support of their parents, but they also still want to be independent. They feel a little caught in between being a kid and being an adult. And trying to fit in, oof, well, the pressure is there. That becomes a priority for them. Are you starting to feel a little stressed right now just empathizing? Oh my goodness, I am. It's a tough stage to be a tween. All these things that can bring mood changes and can swing from feeling confident and happy to feeling irritated and depressed in a very short time span. So it's good for us to be reminded about all this. We can't expect our kids to have the same adult brains with the coping mechanisms that we have that have taken us years to learn and practice. Sometimes when we look at our kids and they start to look older, we think that they should be acting that way, but they just don't have the practice or experience yet. They feel self-conscious about how they look and how they might be different from their friends. I mean, girls in particular are susceptible to this because their physical changes are so apparent. Their growing breasts and their widening hips are very noticeable, and so it's hard to hide. Now, one last thing that can contribute to the emotional whirlwind that is happening in your tween boys. Oh yes, when puberty begins the sexual maturing process. 
That means that once your girl gets her period, she could have children. Now, one aspect of this sexual maturity is being curious about sex and about the bodies of boys. They start to have feelings that are different than friendship. And often at the beginning of puberty, tween girls will be very giggly, maybe even embarrassed when they see or hear anything romantic. And this is an important season in life to be in conversation about with them, what they are seeing and what they're feeling. It's also a great time to be in conversation about their thoughts and their dreams for their future with a boy someday. I remember a boy wanting to kiss me in sixth grade. Oh my goodness, I was so stressed about it. I didn't really want to kiss him. The whole school seemed to know it was happening after school. I just wanted to disappear. I didn't know how to handle it. The peer pressure was so great. It was awful and I didn't have any preparation for how to respond. Now, when you are in those tender middle school years, you just feel like oh, a spotlight is on you all the time. So how can you help her get through all these emotions? Great question. Well, you need to teach her how to de-stress and how to relax in different ways. We wanna make sure that we're teaching her healthy ways to do this. I mean, one important thing is we don't wanna teach her that she needs to turn to food or controlling her food to feel like she has more control. I mean, that's gonna create some bad habits that can impact her for her whole life. But doing healthy things like going for a walk or doing a workout or talking through her day with a friend or journaling about her day or praying or taking a nap or taking a bath or making a cup of tea. These can all be things that help her find healthy ways to relax. Now, I'm a big believer in family dates and family rhythms to give your kids something that they can depend upon and have a built-in process of having fun and being silly and being accepted and building memories. Things like family movie night and game night and pizza night or reading a book together or telling stories or going for a walk or a hike or a bike ride together. These can all be rhythms that you can build into your family that will help her emotions find a resting spot of security. Now, if she cries or she storms off in an angry fit about something that you have no idea what's happening, it's okay. Just give her some space, give her a few minutes, and then go in and ask her if she wants to talk or if she wants to take a nap or if you could make her some tea or hot chocolate. I mean, sometimes they don't even know what is wrong or what they should talk about. It just all feels emotional and hard. But knowing that her mom is there, that her mom is trying to be patient with her and trying to be available and willing to be understanding can go a long, long way. I know you can do this, mama. Like all seasons, when she was little, this will only last for a little bit, and then she will move on to the next stage of growing up. Now, it is tempting to pull away when they have these strong bursts of emotion, but just remember, she needs a little space, but she needs you even more. Now, I have an amazing resource that I've created for you that I think you will love. It's a fun mother-daughter great date that gives you an exercise to list out emotions talk about them, and a whole list of healthy options of what she can do when she's feeling overwhelmed or stressed by them. I even include instructions on how you can make your own stress ball. So you don't want to miss this one. Head on over to girltribenation.com slash emotions and get it for free. Well, friends, thank you so very much for joining me today. I am so honored to have you spend some of your day with me. Here's to raising amazing tween girls. I am cheering you on every step of the way. I believe that tween girls can be smart, healthy, brave, and live with a whole lot more happy in their life. We get to pour into them and help them establish a solid, healthy identity so that as they become young women, they can thrive. Speaking of thriving, don't forget about the upcoming live webinar that I'm hosting. Three secrets every mom needs to help her daughter thrive in puberty. I would love to hang out with you there. Save your seat at girltribenation.com slash webinar. Well, that's all I have for you today, friends. Be sure to subscribe to our show, leave some love with stars and a comment, and spread the word by posting this episode on your social media. Have an incredible day, and I'll see you next week, same time, same place. Bye for now. Thank you.